In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the transferor's basis in a Section 351 transaction when the transferor is receiving more than one class of qualifying stock. So just quick review, we have a 351 transaction when the transferors are transferring property solely in exchange for a corporation's stock and then they have control immediately afterwards. So I want to give you an example to make it a little easier to understand. So let's say that you own a Ferris wheel. You own a Ferris wheel in an adjusted basis or cost, we'll say the same thing in this case, $100,000. And then the fair market value of the Ferris wheel is $975,000. And you're going to form a corporation called Seven Flags Amusement Park and you're going to transfer the, uh, you're going to transfer the Ferris wheel to the Amusement Park Corporation. And in exchange for transferring the Ferris wheel, you get not just one class of stock, you're going to get two classes of stock. And they're both going to be qualified stocks. So as we talked about before, non-qualified stocks, such as mandatorily redeemable preferred stock, could be considered boot. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about two classes of qualified stock. So you're going to receive... 75 shares of common stock and then you're also going to receive 50 shares of qualified preferred stock okay now we have to know the fair market value the estimated fair market value of each class of stock so we're going to say for the common stock we're going to say the fair market value is 585,000 and then the fair market value of the qualified preferred stock is 390,000 and if you add these up uh, they add up to $975,000, which is the fair market value of the Ferris wheel. So that makes sense. So now the question is, you're giving the Ferris wheel to the corporation and you're getting two classes of stock in exchange. Well, we need to know the basis, right? We need to know what the basis is for each class of stock because you might decide to sell the common stock or the preferred stock or both. And you're going to, if you just sell one of the classes of stock, you're going to need to know the basis that applies to the common stock or to the preferred stock, not just the combined basis. So we're going to start, let, let's, let's just, it'll, this will be a good review. We're just going to go through how to calculate the actual basis, and I'll talk to you about how to allocate it. So your basis in the stock received, and this is kind of a long formula, but it'll be helpful to you, it's going to be the adjusted basis of the property that you transfer to the corporation. That's the Ferris wheel, right? You're transferring the Ferris wheel. And we said that in this example, the adjusted basis of the Ferris wheel was $100,000. Now, if there's any gain recognized by the transferor, let's say there was boot gain and or, you know something like that, then you would actually add that, but we're not gonna have any here in this example, so we're just gonna have zero. And then you subtract the fair market value of any boot received. That's zero in this case. You're not receiving any money from the corporation. That's zero. And the corporation is not assuming any liabilities, right? So this is just a simple case because I really want to focus on the allocation issue. So the adjusted basis of all the stock that you're receiving, if we add it all up and just treat it as one class of stock, it would be $100,000. So this is the amount of basis, this 100000 We have to somehow find a way to divide that among the shares of common stock, and among the shares of qualified preferred stock. And so what we're going to do is we're going to allocate this $100,000. We're going to allocate it based on the relative fair market values of each class of stock. And so how that works is as follows. We're going to say, and let me make sure you can see everything here. So we're going to take the, the $585,000. So for the common stock, so I'll just abbreviate C slash S. So the common stock, we're going to take $585,000. And then we're going to divide it by 585,000 plus 390,000. Okay. And that's actually, if, if you calculate that out, that'll give you 0 0.6, or you can think of it as 60%. And so that's the amount, this is basically saying 60% of the basis is going to get allocated to the common stock. So 60%, and we're going to multiply that by the basis, that $100,000. And so that's going to be $100,000 times 60%. So $60,000 $60, is going to be for the common stock. That's going to be the common stock. Now, because there's only two classes, you could just subtract $100,000 minus 60 and know that then $40,000 is going to get allocated to the qualified preferred stock. But I, I'm just going to use the same formula that we did here uh, for the qualified preferred shares just, just so you can see how it goes. So now we'll just say we've got the preferred shares, the, the P slash S, 
and that's 390,000. That's the fair market value, right? And then the total of all the shares is 585,000 plus 390. And so we're just looking at the relative fair market value of the preferred shares to the whole group of shares is 40%. And then we multiply that by the, the total basis that needs to be allocated. That's 100,000. And then that gives us, and I'll, I'll use the same color here, that gives us $40,000. And so 40,000 is going to go to the preferred stock and 60,000 is going to go to the common shares. So if you were to sell, if you were to sell tomorrow, you say, you know what, all right, the section 351 transaction is over with and now I wanna sell the common stock and so let's say you got 585,000 uh, that someone bought it for or what so then that would be your amount realized and you say well what do I subtract your the adjusted basis will you be subtracting the 60,000 so if you sold for example just the common stock the next day this is after the section 351 transaction if you sold the common stock for 585,000 like immediately after the transaction that would be your amount realized and then you say how much basis do I subtract you subtract sixty thousand dollars right if you sold all 75 of, of the common shares and so then you would have a gain you would have a taxable gain of five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars